Hey everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori and today I thought I would give you an example of a grammar lesson in the AMI Montessori classroom. Now, this lesson is going to be on the preposition and to get to the preposition in the Montessori classroom, we've already gone through the article, the noun, the adjective, and the conjunction. So the child at this point has already had those grammar lessons before we get to the preposition. Now, when I introduce this lesson, the child is around usually about five and a half years old, maybe a little bit older, maybe a little bit younger. It depends on their reading level and their reading comprehension skills. We're going to do the preposition today because it's kind of a fun lesson and it kind of gives you a nice idea of what the process is in AMI Montessori. But if you're interested in any of the other lessons that I have in my album for grammar, uh, just let me know, leave a comment down below. The only lessons I don't have a lesson for in my album for the primary age group is pronouns and interjections. So before we begin, make sure you have a teacher tray or a teacher mat set up with some strips of paper, a red pencil, a regular pencil, some scissors, and maybe even some tape. For the preposition lesson, I'm gonna use a little teapot set. You might wanna use something else for your lesson. That's totally fine. Whatever works for your environment. After you see how this lesson goes together, I'm sure you'll have a lot of different ideas of how you could make this work for your environment. We also have printed labels here on the tray that we're gonna show the child and we're gonna tell them, we're gonna work with these later. But to give this lesson, to start out with, I'm gonna write everything by hand. And when I write everything by hand, in AMI Montessori, we use cursive writing. Now, when we do reading, when we're just reading, we use print. So whenever I give a grammar lesson, I am going to give that lesson by writing in cursive. And then when the child wants to practice it on their own, they're gonna have print labels. So to start this lesson, I am gonna write a short phrase on my scrap piece of paper. The first phrase I've written is the fish teapot. Now I'm gonna put it down here and I'll invite the child to read it. If they have trouble reading it, it's okay to help them out. Cursive is kind of tricky, right? And they might not know all of the words yet. So it's okay to help them sound it out. So once you've put the label down right here, you could invite the child to find that object on the tray. Here's the fish teapot. And once they found it, they can put it above the label. Now I'm gonna write another phrase. The empty creamer. Now I'm going to write a different phrase, a tiny cup. And as you can see, our tray is now empty. But before I go on, I want to do something. I want to remind the child of the lesson that we had previously, which is the conjunction. So I'm going to say, I have all of these objects right here. And we want to join them together. What is the word that joins things together? And if they've remembered the last lesson, that's the word and. So I'm gonna write the word and, and I'm gonna join these objects together. Now, I have one more phrase left to write. That last phrase is the serving tray. I'm gonna move these down just a little bit. So we're gonna need a little bit of room for this lesson. The serving tray. And here is the serving tray, right? Got this nice fish serving tray. And I've left a little spot here. So I'm going to tell the child, I'm going to write one more word. I'm going to put it right here. And for this word, I'm going to use my red pencil because this is our new idea that we're doing right here. I 
have a new word right here and it's going to tell me where. I'm going to answer the question where. So let's read what we've written. The fish teapot and the empty creamer and the tiny cup on the serving tray. Can you do that? Let's do that. All right, that's pretty easy, right? We can do that, but what if I change this word? What if I change this word to under? Let's think about that. The fish teapot and the empty creamer and the tiny cup under the serving tray. Hmm. Let's see if we can do that. We're going to put these objects under the serving tray. Yeah, we could do that, right? We can put it under. Let's try one more word. Let's see if this works. The fish teapot and the empty creamer and the tiny cup below the serving tray. Let's put it below the serving tray. I'm gonna move this over just a touch. It's below it, right? So we're gonna change out, every time we go through this, we're gonna change out our preposition. And we're going to switch it back to the original one. I'm going to go back to on. And we're going to put this away for the moment. So that's part one of this lesson. But this lesson comes in three parts. So part one is simply switching out the preposition and manipulating the objects accordingly. But now we have something else that we need to do. The next part of this lesson is called transposition. And transposition is the really fun part of the lesson where we're going to just ask the child to mix it up. Put anything in any order we want. And then see if it makes sense. Let's see what we made now. Because we really want that comprehension that the words have to go in a particular order, right? So here we go. Let's see what we made the empty creamer and on the serving tray and the tiny cup, the fish teapot. Does that make sense? Now let's switch it up again. Let's see what else we can come up with. All right, let's try this one. The empty creamer and, and the fish teapot on the serving tray, the tiny cup. Does that make sense? No. And then after you go through that a few times, ask the child to put it back in order. So let's see if we can remember the order. The fish teapot and the empty creamer and the tiny cup on the serving tray, right? There we go. So now we put it back in order. Now we move on to the third part of the lesson, which is called symbolization. Now in Montessori, every single grammar concept has a symbol. This is how we make it sensorial to the child. This is how we make it more concrete. So before this lesson, like I said before, we've had a lesson on the article, the noun, the adjective, and the conjunction, and now we're learning the preposition. So we're going to have the child do all the symbols that they remember. So for instance, we're gonna ask the question, well, what are we talking about right here? Well, we're talking about a teapot, right? So that gets the large black triangle. And we're talking about the creamer. And we're talking about the cup, right? And then of course, we're talking about the tray. So we identify our nouns and we symbolize them. Then after that, we can do our adjectives. Well, what kind of teapot is it? It's a fish teapot. Now that might be tricky because fish can also be a noun, right? But in this case, we're describing something. What kind of a teapot is it? It's a fish teapot. And what kind of a creamer is it? It's an empty creamer. What kind of a cup do we have? We have a tiny cup. 
And what kind of a tray do we have? We have a serving tray. So now we've identified the adjective and there are lots of adjective lessons before this. The adjective is a really fun concept to teach in Montessori. There are tons of lessons, so it'd be hard to tackle all of them in one video, but if you're interested, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to give you an example of an adjective lesson. But here are the adjectives right here. The child has already worked with adjectives quite a bit. So we'll move on to the article. And actually the article is the very first grammar lesson that we give. When we give the article lesson, we're simply gonna emphasize that the means one and a can mean many, one of many. So that's how we emphasize the article. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna say the fish teapot. The, what does that mean? How many are there? Just one, so it's the fish teapot. Right, and what about the empty creamer? There's just one empty creamer on there, so the is the correct word to use. Just one. So you might wanna emphasize that as you go through your lesson. The. So now we have the article, the adjective, and the noun symbolized, right? And that's what that will look like. Now in the previous lesson, we've done the conjunction. And the conjunction looks like this. It's a little pink bar. So we're gonna identify the conjunction. So that's what that looks like. And now we get to introduce the preposition. And the preposition is this green crescent moon. So we're gonna symbolize it that way. So once the child has been introduced to all three parts of the lesson, the first part is that concrete lesson with the manipulation of objects right here. The second part of the lesson is the transposition. We're gonna mix it all up and ask the child if it makes sense. And then the third part of the lesson is always the symbolization portion. Now, once we've gotten through that, we're gonna to go to our printed labels and we're gonna invite the child to do the exact same thing. I'm gonna take all my cursive words and I'll say, I get to keep these, these are mine. So once we take away the cursive labels, we'll go ahead and we'll bring out the print labels and we'll show the child the print labels and they'll say the serving tray. Maybe we'll have some extra prepositions in there like beside, without, I have the round saucer. I have more objects that go to this. So I might switch out objects once in a while or if something gets broken, right? Because uh, this is a very breakable set. And we do like to work with breakable things because breakable things have consequences, right? They give us a control of error. They give us, they tell the child if they're being too rough with it, right? One way to know if you're in control of your body is if something is or isn't breaking. So that's one of the reasons why we like to work with breakable things in Montessori. And the other reason is we need to make it beautiful. Whatever you decide to pick, make it interesting, make it beautiful, make it attractive to the child because then they're gonna wanna do the work. Preposition, it's not the most fun lesson in the world, but you can make it fun by what you put with it. So think about the fragility of the work, think about the beauty of it or the, or the interesting aspects about it that would call to the child and make them want to take this work off the shelf. So if you're thinking, how many times would a child actually do this lesson? Well, honestly, not very many. The preposition they'll maybe do a few times, but if you have something really attractive that attracts the child to the work, they may do it more often, but they're not gonna repeat this for months. This will be something they take off the shelf maybe half a dozen times, and then you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson. So in primary, we've done the article, the adjective, the noun. Then we introduce the conjunction and the preposition. And then we start moving on to the verb and the adverb. And that's all we do in primary. Once they get into elementary, they start learning all the other types of grammar. So anyways, I hope you found that interesting. If you like this video, if you like the idea of doing grammar this way, let me know. Give me a comment down below. And don't forget to share this video and also subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video.